We're going to take a look at some of these new products from DJI, which if you're clicking on this video, I assume you've probably already seen the news. I want to take a look at the DJI, DJI, not DGI, DJI RS4 Pro. And I'm actually more interested in the Focus Pro, this kind of LiDAR module they have attached. We'll get into it, but this is the news from DJI. I wonder if they'll have uh, anything else coming up. Uh, considering NAB is right around the corner. That's always fun. I'm not as interested in the gimbal. I find gimbals are kind of not all that great for stabilization or anyway, they're not the ideal way you would want to stabilize. Uh, nowadays with all the IBIS systems that are built into cameras, it does such a better job, I think, uh, for certain types of handheld shooting. And I find a gimbal far more valuable as just the pan and tilt axis like you would see on a setup like this or any kind of scenario where you don't have hands on the camera directly, but you want to control it and you want to pitch and tilt and do all that kind of stuff. I think that's kind of what a gimbal is best suited for. It can stabilize. It does do that. But the bobbing and the limitations associated with it, I don't think are worth the trade-offs when it comes to just wanting stable footage. So these kind of I don't know, handheld gimbals. They became really, really popular. They were quite trendy for quite a while. And now I just feel like it's kind of past its prime. We need to reinvent the gimbal maybe. Maybe find a better way to do that sort of thing. And a lot of that has happened with the sensor technology and putting IBIS in these cameras instead of relying on a gimbal to stabilize you. Because I don't really, I don't have an issue being stable with, you know, tilting and panning and all that stuff. It's just kind of the general bobby and shakiness which you still get with a gimbal to a certain degree it ends up tending to just be a little bit i don't know looks a little different and it's not my favorite thing to do you had a lot of weight and you had a lot of batteries that need to be charged and just extra bulk to your system that i think is not essential anymore i'm sure people still use them i mean if you want one get it but i'm more interested in the lidar focus pro because I think this technology is actually pretty cool and allows you to do autofocus with manual focus lenses. At least that's the primary purpose. I will get into some of my thoughts around that because I think it's a little limiting all the way it's currently being marketed, but let's take a look. So DJI Focus Pro, feel the focus. It's got this LiDAR box on top of the camera and let's see what they're saying. LiDAR focusing accessible to all. AMF, human machine collaboration. Oh, that doesn't that sound wonderful? You got your fizz, lens control, focus iris zoom, seamless interconnect. Okay, great. LiDAR focusing now accessible to all. Yes, okay, it always was. All right, so this is in the non gimbal mode. Uh, you could get this as part of the gimbal, which is how they sold a previous version of this with the RS3 Pro. They had a LiDAR module that looked essentially the exact same. So I don't know if it's the same module or if this is a different one, but it looks very similar and you mount on top of your camera. And of course, you don't see the light beams. That's just for us to all understand what it's doing. And we're gonna go down and take a look here. We've got some touch screens, some apps, of course, some integration, Bluetooth. Okay, great. Advanced autofocus, a leap ahead. All right, 20 meter human subject focus distance. I assume that's the maximum and a 70 degree super wide field of view. Okay, that's interesting because those are some stats to keep in mind as we talk about some competitive products uh, that we might get into. More accurate and stable focusing. Of course, a lot of this, if you have perfect autofocus on your camera, <laughs> it's we're using native lenses. Uh, maybe it's not, this is not a priority, but yes, if you want to use cinema glass, having ma traditionally manual focus lenses being autofocus for you is quite helpful. And so here's some examples of tracking. It's got some autofocus subject recognition. That's always nice. Autofocus subject switching. You can adjust the speed of it and you can choose the focus area. Flexible combinations for diverse scenarios. So it looks like this thing is, is still a bunch of stuff you're putting on your camera. And that's kind of my biggest gripe with it. Uh, even looking at their previous offering with the RS3 Pro and that LiDAR module, you had to use the gimbal, you had to get it to work. And even though, for example, I think Lumix said they were going to support some kind of integration, even using the native lenses, which is what I personally would be most interested in, you still had to have all the stuff. And I don't want the weight. I don't want the junk hanging off the camera. That little box on top of the camera, in my mind, should be all the technology I need if it can integrate with a camera. Now, that does take a level of sophistication beyond what DJI could do themselves. They'd have to partner with Lumix or Sony or Canon or Nikon or whoever. 
but I think that's the optimal use of this technology. I don't think it's a great use to have the box on top of the camera, build out an entire second hand grip along with the focus motor separate from the box. And it's all these wires and stuff hanging off. I just don't think it looks great. And I can't imagine it's all that fun to operate because now I'm looking at this wondering, how do you set this camera down? It looks like that hand grip rests lower. Of course, if it's on a tripod, that doesn't matter. I just, I like the direction this is headed. I just don't like the execution, at least what I'm currently seeing. I'd want a much more streamlined, integrated version of this. Yes, use LiDAR, have the box. I understand we need to throw some beams out there of light that we can't see, but that the machine can, but then that's what, like this box, yes. But no, no, I don't want the grip. I don't want that. No, I don't want any of this other stuff. I want it to be simpler. And I wish they could have done that with the previous LiDAR module, just plug it in USB-C to the camera and let's have it communicate that way. Because for example, this is all needed, right? If you, you need the gears to control your cinema glass, but for me, I want to do something like autofocus on like the Lumix GH6, for example, camera notoriously bad at autofocus in video, continue autofocus. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about autofocus for pictures. That's been I'm pretty much well, well done for quite a while now. We're talking about autofocus for video, continuous autofocus, no pulsing, good subject tracking, all that. You've got a lot of cameras out there. The GH6 is one of them. A few others I can think of maybe Blackmagic Design has a few cameras that are not great autofocus. This would be great using native glass because then the motors and everything are internal to the lens and all that communication is happening with the camera. I don't like the idea of having to do the traditional kind of uh, focus gear wheel ring like you would have on you know a cinema lens, which is, yeah, that's fine. But we've we've built these motors and these things into the lenses themselves. Why are we not taking advantage? Why are we now putting motors on the outside? Again, yes, cinema glass, I understand, but we have lenses that aren't like this. They have all that uh, technology built into them. Why aren't we taking advantage of that? A lot of the cameras like Sony takes advantage of it, of course, with their incredible autofocus. And now Lumix is catching up with their autofocus technology, phase detect finally being in some of their newer cameras. I just, this seems so clunky. It seems so old school. It seems so traditional. It doesn't seem cutting edge and high tech. This seems like we just put a bunch of stuff on the outside of the camera so that you can do a few cool new things, which admittedly are pretty cool, but this seamless interconnectivity, all this, no, it's not seamless interconnectivity. You're plugging stuff in. You got wires, you're putting it on a gimbal, you're adding stuff. I just think, look at all this stuff. If you buy the DJI Focus Pro, you got to get all this stuff. I just want the box with the light beams and a thousand dollars for something. I only want a fourth of it. it. It just does not seem worth it to me at this point. I think there will be, and I'm hopeful that there's going to be better integrations in the future, considering we've got things like this over here. So this is the PD Movie Live Air 3 Smart. Terrible name, terrible name. But made a short film you've got, uh, you know, people testing this stuff out, and I think there's a lot of limitations, but it essentially does the same thing, and it's all in one. So you've got your gear wheel, you know, your 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 focus control with the lidar built in. So it's the motor and the lidar all in one, and I think that is a better, more streamlined option, even though the tech might not be as good as DJI's. I, I assume it's not. I think if we go take a look over on their site, we can look at some of those specs. Smart, let's see, what do we got here? I think, yeah, well, it's B&H. I don't want B&H, I want their website. Here we go. So they have a few very variants of this and you can do all the things that DJI is doing, but I think just right out the box, you can get it to work with just that, um, the motor, that's all you need. And in my mind, that's the direction we should head. I'm not saying this is perfect. I haven't used it. I don't know. Maybe it's junk, <laughs> but we'll see. Look at some of these specs. So the autofocus distance is four meters to five meters. That's substantially lower than what DJI is offering. And the field of view is only 28 degrees compared to, I think, was it 70 over on DJI? So you are sacrificing quite a bit in terms of 
the specs and the performance, but I love the possibility of something this small and integrated. Again, not saying it's perfect. I don't know. Some of their samples look promising. So I, I would need to do a little bit more research myself and actually test it out. And I'm sure the DJI new Focus Pro, I'm, yes, it probably works well, but I don't like how it works. A lot of times it's not about the spec for me. It's about the workflow. It's about the integration. Yes, I'm gaining cool LiDAR autofocus, but what am I sacrificing in that process? How much am I losing? Am I charging more batteries? Am I carrying more equipment with me? Do I have to have another case to pack this stuff up? How much does it weigh? What's the setup time? Those are not easy sacrifices to make just for something that nowadays a lot of these cameras are doing it built in. And I'm not one to sit here and want cinema glass necessarily. There are some advantages that it has, but a lot of times the advantages are overhyped or they're maybe a little misleading. You think of a more expensive lens, a cinema lens, oh, it must be sharper. It must be better. It's not often true. Sometimes they're not sharper. Uh, maybe you like that. Maybe you like the softer, more filmic look. You think that digital sensors are, are too uh, sharp and too clean. There's there's always the stylistic subjective takes that everyone has. But for me, I like things to be streamlined. I like it to be lightweight. I like to use the technology to its fullest. Cinema lenses have been for, around for quite a while, and they keep making them for a certain market. There's a type of... Uh, you know, professional that wants to use that type of glass. If that's you, go for it. A lot of anamorphic lenses. I don't think there's any autofocus anamorphics that I can think of. That would be kind of cool if there were. So those are some op options. If you're in into anamorphic shooting, yes, something like this, or even the new DJI Pro, Focus Pro would make sense for anamorphics. But I don't know. I'm I feel like we're we're should be moving beyond this level even though it's very cool even though it does do a lot and it's great technology let's condense it let's build it into the camera why doesn't a camera have lidar just built into it already we used to have the little pop-up flash have a pop-up lidar box it just poop and it can film whatever you know sh shoot the light beams out that way i feel like that would be a lot more practical for the the vast majority of the market where Yes, this is aimed at maybe high-end, you know, professionals working in Hollywood, but are they going to be eager to lose their focus puller? You know, no, I don't think so. This is, yeah, yeah, it's all glitz and glam. Oh, cinema lenses, be like Hollywood. But this is really for your, you know, independent filmmaker, content creator type who's looking to spend a thousand dollars because that's what it is. Oh, spend a thousand dollars and have perfect, you know, lidar autofocus until we come out with the next one next year. Cause I don't, you know, that's why I almost looked at getting when they announced the LIDAR integration on the RS3 Pro with Lumix S sitting there thinking, well, that would be cool if it could just work with just the box. And so I tested it and didn't work and thought, well, that's a dumb solution. <laughs> and people just bought that maybe potentially. Now they got a brand new one, but is it a new one? Cause it looks more or less the same. I'd really have to dig in and they might not tell you I don't even know where I'd look to know if this box is the same. It looks pretty similar. I really wonder if it is. I don't know. I just am not. The gimbal is not getting me excited. And this level of LiDAR is, is not what I'm personally looking for. I'd be curious if you have a particular use for it that you find interesting, why this speaks to you. But for as much as I, I like DJI, I like their products. I think they've done a great job over the last 10 years or so building out their brand, offering really cool cutting edge products, bringing gimbals out, drones, all, of course, all that really affordable and easy to use. You know, generally the Osmo pocket three, I'm a fan of that, but this just seems like uh, not, it's not quite there. Maybe I don't want to say it's half baked. I just don't know for the problem it solves. I don't know if it's worth this solution. I think for autofocus, we already have it built into most cameras. And if you really want to autofocus your manual cinema lenses, that's a very niche thing to want to do. And I don't know if you're going to want to do it this way. But that's just me. Maybe um, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. But that's all, that's all I can kind of see when I look at this. I'm not excited to click buy. If it was the box and I could just plug that into the camera, 
I think I'd be down here scrolling as fast as I could. He's like, send me to the store. Give me to the store. But let me buy it now. Because let's see, what do we got? You got the, the creator combo. See there even the creator combo? So this is for cinematographers or is for creators? You really, you need, you need this? What, what cinema lenses are you shooting with? I, I feel like most <laughs> creators would be on Sony and have autofocus already. Uh, I'm sure it caters to somebody. It's just not me. And I, I don't know who it would be. Yeah, I, I if I could buy just the box and plug it in, just give me that. That's all I want. Whoever makes it. Like, I got to check this other, the PD movie, this terribly named thing. The PD movie smart live air gosh what is this thing called it's the worst name ever live air three smart the live air three smart live air three smart lidar autofocus system call it the lidar air what's live what's live what's smart what's three i just don't i don't know what these people what they're thinking this one looks, it looks, it's not quite as polished. You can tell that it's not designed, you know, in the, in the same engineering lab that DJI has, but it doesn't have to be, you know, if it gets the job done and it works, probably it sounds like from the reviews I've kind of peeked at that it's a little clunky to use. It does work, but it's not as maybe seamless as a DJI's integration is in terms of what they promise. What do they say? Seamless interconnectivity that's what it was seamless interconnectivity dji probably has that covered but i think i i like the direction i just don't think we're quite there yet 